All right, guys. So, welcome to another video. Um, another one with my car. So, there's so much pressure building up inside of the coolant reservoir. Like, at idle for maybe like five minutes. Let it sit for like three, four hours. Come back out, check it. And when we come back out and check it, there's so much pressure inside the coolant reservoir. Uh, when I drive it, the coolant goes down. I park it, turn it off, go inside, come back out, and take the cap off, and it comes shooting out everywhere. So, I think it's the head gasket. So, it, I drain the oil catch can reservoir I drained that uh, I'll post a picture of that right here so yeah that was what came out of my coolant reservoir or the oil reservoir so I think that there's antifreeze inside the oil which results in a head gasket so I'm going to have to take the bed off take the hoses off take the inner cooler out air filter um i might have to take the turbo off i hope i don't have to because that was kind of a pain but hey eh, if you have to you have to all right so we'll check that i'll try it again today i'll record it this time so you guys can see what i'm talking about and we'll go from there i hope i don't i hope it's not a head gasket because I gotta pull uh, everything out, but it is what it is. It's gotta get done, it's gotta get done. So, we'll see. I'll start pulling stuff apart, check the reservoir, see if there's any pressure still in it. If there yeah. is, everybody I called so far is the head gasket. So, probably order new head studs and Evo sells a head gasket that they said holds up to like 700 horsepower, which I'll never get that high, probably, maybe. So we'll go from there and we'll be pulling the motor apart right now, but let's check the coolant reservoirs, check, see if there's any pressure in there and we'll go from there. The reservoir I was talking about right here so the max line, the minimum line right now, if you can tell it's all the way up here. So you take this off, it just comes spraying out. There's still, it's still under pressure. And I haven't even turned the car on or anything. So still under pressure. I don't know what's going on, but I don't know, it could be something to do with the E85. So every, everybody I was talking to uh, said E85 could get into the oil. The vapors could get into the oil. So you, if you run E85, you need to change your oil a lot more often. But there shouldn't be that much buildup inside the coolant reservoir as it begins with. So we're going to start pulling all this stuff apart. Um, have to take pretty much the whole motor apart, the top of the motor and stuff. So we'll have to do that. Have to take the valve cover off, the cans, timing chain, all that stuff. Pull the, take the head studs out. I need to order new head studs. Maybe that could be the problem too. Maybe not so much the 85, but these are also stock head studs. Um, I'm, I'm gonna buy the ARP head studs. So ARP is, everybody runs ARP head studs. Supposedly, with what I read and all that stuff, ARP is the best head studs out there. So, yeah. 
we'll get out we'll get after it start pulling stuff off the car and we'll record and go from there so wish me luck a lot of work ahead of us all right so i already have the nitrous purge line disconnected um we're gonna start by taking the bed off take the bed off pull the fenders out take the intercooler off i already have the air filter off and we'll start coming into all this stuff all right so the first step of doing any kind of motor work to these can ams is um taking off the fenders so what we did here was we just removed these bolts they're not really threaded in anything what they are is uh they have little clips on the end of them so they have these little clips here on the end you shove these down and this uh this holds it in place and gets it lined up correctly and then you just throw your hardware on the top side you thread it pretty much just thread it in or just you sometimes they'll be able to just shove in other times you gotta thread it in uh, but that keeps the fenders in place and then we'll start here um, by removing there's one two three four five six there's six bolts with nuts on the bottom that hold the bed in place uh, and then once we get that taken care of then we're gonna hop over to taking the bed out so then we got to take off the intercooler cover uh, here to take his intake off we're gonna have to take off the uh, so when you take these off, you got, there's one bolt under here for the uh, the headlight, or I'm sorry, the tail light. And then once you come under here, underneath this bracket right here, uh, there's two bolts that hold on to the, the back side of the roll cage. We'll take those two off, and then we'll take off this uh, this bed mount. Um, once we take th that off, the bed will just come off. It doesn't just come off easy. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get it all the way off. Uh, but once we get it off, then we'll be able to work on the motor and it'll be a lot easy access. We won't have to be kind of getting on ladders and trying to get our hands in the intercooler spot. Uh, so we'll update you guys once we get the bed off. All right, so now the bed's off. So what we did was we pushed on this corner and bent, bent it all the way in and then until it came up and then it just slid out on that side. So you just slide it up the top. Um, I don't think it really wasn't damaged, so looks good still. So at this point, we're gonna be taking off, what are you taking off, the intercooler yeah, closes? The intercooler Just taking off the charge tubes to the intercooler all the way back there. And then we'll, you're gonna pull the turbo off. Okay, my pull the turbo. We'll see when we get there. That looks good. You guys weren't supposed to see that. All right, so. Right here, we got the fuel line disconnected. We just had to push these two together and pull it off. Uh, no, no, no. It sounds what you did with the... it sounds a lot easier than it actually was, but pretty much you have to squeeze this pretty much as hard as you can to deform the sides to open up the top and bottom. Yeah, Once you do up. that, it just pulls off. And if you can't, you can fit a little screwdriver in there if you need to. Yeah, be gentle because I don't even know how much that would be. And just like that, the intake is out. So we're moving on. All right, so we're gonna take this off now. This is on the turbo, so we'll go from there. Uh, same size as the other one, so it should be a 10 millimeter. Unscrew this, pull it back, and then we'll get to all the bolts. Take the oil line off. Should be closer to pulling the, pulling all the stuff off. So as you can see, 
turbo's out so we're gonna start on the top of the valve cover here and take the spark plugs out then take the valve cover off and go from there hold on brother. Under a lot of pressure, that's why as soon as you pull that thing out, there's gonna be panic freeze and go everywhere. I guess it came from the other way. <laughs> Dude, I wonder if the GoPro actually got that squirting out. I think it I think it uh you want you want me to plug it with something like a bag? No, it's too late at this point. Just let it leak, dude. Uh, all the hand Why don't you point the light at it? I don't know, but it's not catching it because it's already wet. <laughs> we need to we need to look into that too, Bryce. Why it's all right there? <laughs>